So this is a pretty cool video. This is courtesy of an account called Studio 222 and it's a Kanye West Yeezy Season 9 backstage interview. The reason why I'm playing this because I feel like there's like a sly concerted effort to try and reintroduce Ye back into the public conversation in like a good way. He's obviously trying his best to make sure people know that he's still on this I hate Jews time, right? By posting what he posted about the flipping Jonah Hill 21 Jump Street movie. He's still reminding people that now nah, I'm still an anti-Semite. Like, be real, right? I'm not going to be on this fun, fun thing. So he's still reminding people what time he's on. But I still feel like whoever it is out there is doing a sly job of putting out certain pieces. And he just wants to get back in bed with him and all this sort of malarkey that's giving me the idea that maybe they want to re reintroduce Kanye back into the flipping public conversation because there's basically no one like him out there. And he generates a lot of clicks and views. He pays a lot of people's salaries. He's putting kids, their kids through private schools. He's paying for their vacations. He's allowing people to buy presents for their mistresses and wives and shit he's giving them tickets to his amazing shows there's a whole you know economy around Kanye West that if he's not out there producing and making things that it kind of makes it hard for those other people to eat so I think they're trying to get him back out there so this video might be part of the overall plan that overall plan that they have so as I said this video is um courtesy of an account called Studio 222 um it says Kanye West is season nine backstage interview and i'm gonna play it now for you lovely people i'm gonna play it now for you lovely lovely people how do i look with that oh michelle lamy it's good it's the beginning we're we're on a journey Just selling White Lives Matter t-shirts to white people. That's about it. <laughs> he didn't know at that time how much damage that t-shirt would cause, did he? He had no idea. <laughs> that White Lives Matter t-shirt, man, was fucking legendary, honestly. It still hasn't got... That's the thing with this guy. He made all that commotion about that White Lives... No, White Lives Matter t-shirt. But could you even buy it? He didn't make it to buy because I think whoever he was producing it with was... um actually Dove Cherney if I'm not mistaken the guy who used to formerly found who formerly had the brand American Apparel but I think it's gone now he's got another brand now called Los Angeles Apparel that basically designs the same type of stuff but essentially he's in the business of creating really high quality blanks like t-shirts sweatshirts and whatnot and he was producing I think a lot of the Yeezy stuff which I didn't know about I think it happened because I only knew about it because he then decided to come out and publicly disavow Kanye because of his you know anti-semitic anti-Jewish flipping remarks with him being Jewish himself and then also I guess the White Lives Matter t-shirt he also didn't want to be a part of so because he was meant to be producing them and he kind of didn't want to put them out so eventually whatever they made they end up handing out in Skid Row him and Ian Connor and a few other people so all of that commotion he didn't end up selling one and it ended up playing a part in his career coming to a weird end, you know, temporarily. Weird, isn't it? <laughs> Who are they saying good morning to? Kanye or God? Who are they saying that to? This sounds I love I love Sunday service as a flipping spectacle, but the cult vibes it's giving, the you know, the flipping urban Scientology vibes it's giving. This is kind of giving like you know when do you remember when Hill Song started popping off, right? That white church or the flipping pastors with the tattoos. Then suddenly it felt like because black churches have been doing that for ages. But if black churches then realize, oh shit, we can kind of have our preachers up on the stage wearing Jordans and skinny jeans too. So then came SPAC Nation, all that sort of stuff, right? We kind of made our own thing. We saw Hillsong, we thought, let's do SPAC Nation. Let's have all our teach all our preachers in Fendi and Dior and flipping Gucci and shit, blah, blah, blah. And I feel like, you know, Donda Academy, what's it called? Sunday service type of vibes is giving. It's giving a lot of that because there's a lot of... Um, you don't really hear a lot of preaching. You don't really hear a lot of sermons. 
um i don't know if they even read the bible there they sing these songs that are kind of you know in interpretations of like common pop songs with like gospel words changed in there i don't know it's a little bit miffed it's, it's like they're creating their own religion along the way i mean freestyling religion i don't know brother seems a little bit culty to me bro Oh, and by the way, at this EDC season nine show, I thought the kids sounded fucking shit. Those kids singing can't sing. They sounded fucking awful. You know, like when you go to a kids talent show, it, unless it's a family member, they're all fucking shit. Um, I felt they sounded horrible. So that was one thing where I knew. Oh, imagine being cancelled for a show where the clothes were all right and the singing was horrendous. In my opinion, personally, anyway. But what do I know? <laughs> fashion <laughs> what would you want to see too watch and you'll see so there we have it watch and you'll see so like i said i get the feeling that there is something happening there is something happening out there somebody wants kind oops somebody wants kanye to be in people's good graces again and they're essentially putting out these bits and bobs of these features you know you see how influential is the people he had at his show michelle lamy all this stuff you think all these people aren't his friends anymore they still like the guy they still know he's a genius they still want to be at the shows they still want to be in there amongst the mix and whatnot hanging out so i'm sure there is a part of it that's kind of happening behind the scenes so don't be surprised if you do see a weird you know kanye comeback because at the end of the day the guy is blockbuster as fuck you know what i mean this guy is blockbuster there currently is no one like him out there in culture he's clearly annoying clearly a pain in the ass but essentially he's still able from you know some occasions to create these amazing cultural moments these amazing clothes um that tell amazing stories changing trends palettes colorways textures shapes and whatnot and just overall contributing to the you know public discourse that's going on at the moment with clothes and his interaction with society in general this guy is larger than life his talent is undeniable and unfortunately when you're this talented it doesn't matter what you say people will forgive you and you will be welcome back and i'm person me personally i'm here for everything he produces everything that he makes is absolute god tier in my opinion and he's an absolute freak of a creative and i can't wait to see what he has coming back you know once he is reintroduced because you know after all this turmoil after all this exile after all this frustration all this anger all this beef he's definitely going to create some of the best stuff he's ever done unfortunately it's going to be some of the best stuff so if you're not a fan you're going to be really upset you're going to see a lot of him i think over the coming months because it feels like there is a real effort to make sure that people are reminded that hey i know he said some wild stuff but he does also make some great stuff that's the feeling that i'm getting right now and it's even more because i see this random tweet courtesy of hype never dies where they feature this which shows every a that's easy sneaker ever released and in my opinion judging by this color palette because again you forget you forget right uh, the, the amount of power and the amount of things that this guy has put out over the years you honestly do forget but look at some of the colorways of the shoes here featured from all the yeezys that he's put out over the years and if i'm not mistaken if i look at these shoes i think it's the wrong way around so this is actually the first amount of shoes right the first shoes ever that he put out right all the way into the current iterations you look at some of these shapes and you can generally i can generally say as being a fan of sneakers these silhouettes didn't exist before before yeezy came around and before kanye started producing and doing what he's doing at that brand with the help of other designers also but what happened i felt like beforehand was that everybody was copying the silhouettes that you'd get from reebok from adidas from nike and from any other big sportswear brand out there and new balance of course no one was really making their own shapes and kind of standing by them or silhouettes they were kind of going by what ever ever existed and i feel like with yeezy especially off the back of what kanye did with nike with these with these flipping um shoes that he did there he completely changed what he was doing and kind of went for this minimal look where essentially he wanted somebody to be able to tell a yeezy from afar without it being 
noticed by the branding, which is something that you saw a lot of with most big sportswear brands out there. The branding would kind of tell you in the logo what the shoe was before the actual design of the shape did. And Kanye went to kind of subvert that. So he went for all these really interesting shapes and kind of uppers where there wasn't many, many bits of paneling, where a lot of it kind of fixated on the materials and whatnot, and some of the shape and the sole uses on them in some of the 350s and some of the... Um, 700 750s all these type of silhouettes came about and the other thing is all they doesn't get i think enough credit for and his team are the colorways i don't think there is many colorways in the whole catalog of what Yeezy's put out that have been misses they've all been i think undeniable hits and they all feel very fresh they all feel very original but they all feel very easy also in terms of the overall color color palettes that they use so for sure you know somebody's able to produce this selection of shoes that's worth in the billions in terms of intellectual property right into the multi-billions you'd imagine there's no way a brand is going to want to not want to partner up with him again because he was if he was able to produce this much that i've got here on screen right all of these flipping shoes in what how much period was he at yeezy it feels like he was at yeezy i'm gonna say to flip in just a stretch was it more than six years because i think his debut collection was at like 2015 that one where everyone was like standing around so let's say it was over six years in over six years he produced all of these shoes that is a lot especially and all these shoes kind of you know are, are culturally significant they hold a lot of resale value if you care about that sort of stuff they were viral on them you know in terms of the marketing side of things you know the influencer side of things they're all crazy loads of influencers loved having these things they'd go crazy about getting them for free they'd go out of the way to pay for them so i think this guy is definitely out there and definitely still important enough in culture that people would want to kind of align with him especially commercially and whatnot so don't be surprised if you see Kanye making a comeback because I think he's too undeniable and people want to be associated with him regardless. People want to be associated with him regardless.